Hello and welcome to episode 2 of this five-part series. It is called The Peter Greenwood Show at the Edinburgh Fringe. I spoke to guests of all varieties, comedy, music, performers, all kinds up at the Edinburgh Fringe. If you missed the show yesterday, then you can catch up on the podcast. It is you know, just below this one, so take a little look down. Just look down. Look down where you are right now. That's episode one. If you missed, missed yesterday's, go listen because it was a good one. But... Today is also a good one because I have got Flo and Joan, I have got Johnny from Johnny and the Baptist coming up, but I started with Ahir Shah, and he came in, and we sat and went through a definitive list of fruit-based soft drinks. No, really, we did. Take a listen. How are you, Ahir? I'm very well, thank you. I've just uh, acquired a pint of blackcurrant and soda, and we, uh, before the recording started, were uh, deliberating the merits of assorted citrus fruits. Uh, so it's been a it's been a thriller thus far. Well, you say citrus. This is something I can't get over. I mentioned it a little bit ago. There's a tree with oranges to up just to the left of us. Oh yeah, they're fake. They're fake. Yeah. Aren't you so disappointed? Because I was going to offer people oranges during the interview. Like, would you like an orange? Well, I mean, I would have thought that if, if there was an orange tree growing inside in Scotland, it would mean that climate change had taken hold far quicker <laughs> than any of us were anticipating. Yeah. So, if anything, I'm quite glad that they're plastic, which is one of the few occasions that you can be glad of that. Yeah. Orange, real oranges are better than plastic oranges. Yeah. Well, I think we can all agree on that. I don't think that we're going to prevent any scurvy with the uh, results of that tree. <laughs> Although I wonder if you didn't tell people they were fake oranges, would they try to come in and eat them? Because I nearly did, so... <laughs> just say to people, would you like an orange? Here you go, and they just well, take a bite. Well, I hope that others do the same in order to make you feel less bad about yourself. Though. That would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So tell me about your show. What is it about? Uh, it is a stand-up comedy show about certainty, I think, uh, and that's a, that's that's the general vibe. Uh, I just I just talk for an hour uh, and attempt not to lose the voice that's currently in the process of being lost uh, <laughs> as as we speak now. Has it been hard on your throat the last few days? I don't know why it happens. Like we all talk every day. <laughs> why is it so? Why not, is it so hard? Yeah. Uh, and so I just end up with this ridiculous rasp uh, from about day three of the fringe, and it takes about a month to get over. Uh, does it Does it make you feel more... What's the word I'm searching for? Uh, what is the word I'm searching for? Johnny Cash. That's what <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for. Like, deeper voice, like, hello yeah. there. Uh, Welcome to the show. <laughs> No, well, it, it takes a long time to... So I remember once uh, meeting someone towards the end of the Fringe and it taking her about a month to realise that this isn't what I sound like. It's uh, <laughs> very confusing yeah. uh, for everyone. Uh, yeah, normally I'm about three octaves higher and uh, I'm from the West Country. All right. No, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I was wondering, like, West Country? Where did that come from? That's yeah. new. So... How long have you been working on this show for The Fringe? Have you done it before The Fringe, or is it special for up here? Uh, I've been working on it for about two months, uh, and uh, not by uh, design, but rather by necessity. Uh, and yes, it's, uh, it, it's new for The Fringe. I've been doing a bunch of work in progresses, and then you bring it up here, and people either applaud or pelt. What's been the most common... I mean, we're only three, four days in so far. Gosh, yeah. What's been the common denominator? Have they pelted or cheered? They've uh, mercifully, to this point, largely been cheering. Uh, Touch wood. Yes, uh, so we shall, we shall hope that that's maintained. What is the audience reaction to the show? Have they been enjoying it? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Uh, that's a, I mean, uh, they may just be being very polite, uh, but uh, hopefully... It seems as though uh, people are, you know, laughing in the places that they're supposed to laugh, and that's uh, all one can really hope for. That's what you do hope for as a comedian, I imagine. Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, a slew of tears from the beginning wouldn't be ideal. <laughs> you walk in and people have just got handfuls of tissue just mopping yeah. their faces. <laughs> no, that's me dealing with the heat of the room. Yeah, it's it's a bit pooky. Up here in Edinburgh. Oh, gosh, everywhere. Well, none of the places were designed for this, uh, where we operate. So I am in some form of, like, storage vault. Uh, <laughs> other people, like, the entirety of the underbelly was where the Royal Bank of Scotland used to store banknotes before they realised that storing them in a damp cavern was a terrible idea. Uh, yeah, paper and damp don't go together. Yes, uh, and so, uh, mostly the contactless revolution struck just in time uh, for there to be uh, an overpriced venue. Um, and, yeah, everyone else is in, like, a broom cupboard. 
And so I just got stuck on the idea of everyone else performing in a broom, clo- broom closet. I mean, there are a lot of broom closets uh, <laughs> knocking around at the fringe where you can go and see shows, and they all charge the performers through the absolute nose in yeah. order for the privilege of doing something that during the rest of the year is largely used to store bleach. Uh, and it's an absolute lunacy and should be heavily regulated and stopped. Well, that being said, if you breathe in too much, you don't won't have that problem because you'll be asleep. <laughs> all the all the bleach spills on the floor over the years. Uh, how was that sketch show? I got chloroformed. I don't, uh, I'm told it was brilliant. By yeah. who? Everyone else was asleep. Yeah, <laughs> the performers in gas masks. <laughs> If you all look under your seat, there's not a gas mask for you. Enjoy it, suckers. <laughs> Where can people find out more about you online and about your show? Uh, you can find out uh, more about me online uh, by, by Googling, I suppose. Uh, or Bing it! Bing it! Bing me! Is Bing even still a thing? Everyone Bing me. I can't express the degree to which I want you all to Bing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you type in Ahir Shah into Bing, I'm probably going to like the fifth page because it's not going to work on the first four. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, type it into type it into the internet. N- none of us know how it works. Yeah, just uh, it's just there. Th- there are pipes, and we get to look at cats. <laughs> it's all it's all any of us know. Cats are brilliant, though, aren't they? They are, yes, uh, but I would uh, like to understand more how they uh, come into my eye line, uh, and I do not. I, I've got a cat. She's a pain in the ass, but I like <laughs> cats. <laughs> Irregardless, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you not for at all. seeing thank me. Thank you very much for having me. It's been great to chat to you. Cheers, you too, brother. I hear Shar's show is called Dots, and he is playing at Monkey Barrel 3 up at the Monkey Barrel Comedy Club from August the 7th until the 25th. After I hear, I spoke to Bryony Kimmings, and I have a thing I do where I ask everyone their name and what they do, just for the audience at home, although most of the time I cut it out so you don't actually get to hear it. But I asked Bryony, what's your name? What do you do? And she gave one of the best answers I've ever heard. My name is Bryony Kimmings, and I describe myself as an autobiographical performance artist, but some people call me a comedian. (laughs) <laughs> Autobiographical performance artist Yeah That would look great on a business card I think it wouldn't fit probably <laughs> Or an autobiography Well I wish I wish Do you have a title for your autobiography yet? Oh god I don't even know what I'd call it I don't think I'd ever write an autobiography actually My life's not been that interesting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that as a performance artist But the show is brilliant Have you seen it? I haven't yet, I'm just saying. It is brilliant. brilliant. The show is absolutely brilliant, even if I do say so myself. Tell us a little bit about it. What is the show? It's called I'm a Phoenix Bitch. Um, Which is a fantastic title, by the way. I like it. It's I'm a Phoenix, comma, bitch, not I'm a Phoenix Bitch. Yeah, I say it wrong, probably. Um, What's it about? Um, It's a sort of funny, but also very sad show about um, a very traumatic year of my life, basically, and how I kind of got over it and a lot of that has to do with motherhood and having a child who got very ill and relationship breakdown, those kinds of things. Um, But yeah, it's a show I've been doing for about a year, so it's not a new show for me. So it's actually really nice to be up here doing something where you feel a bit like, I like this show. Mm -hmm. It's finished. (laughs) That's kind of a a heavy topic. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I don't want (laughs) to, I don't want, I'll take the kind out, kind of out. It is a heavy topic. Yeah, heavy topic, yeah. How did you decide to do a show about that? And how do you take humour from that situation? Well, I always make shows about my work, so it's, uh, about my life, sorry. So it's not um, uncommon for me to do something like that. Thanks, darling. Someone's just handed me a coffee. (laughs) It's all go behind the scenes here. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so it's not unusual for me to do it. I mean, it took me a while to process what was going on. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, how do you find humour in it? Well, before this show, I made a cancer musical with cancer patients, most of whom were terminally ill. And even in those kind of dark hospital wards where people were getting their chemo and stuff, you laugh because you have to. You know, we find humour, especially British people, mm-hmm. humour in, in the darkness of things. So you kind of have to laugh. So yeah, I try and keep the show as light as I possibly can until until it has to get sad because you need to give people that relief I think or release before they cry and how does the audience react to the show do they go along with it or do you ever feel any kind of pushback from them 
I don't really feel pushback. I actually, at the beginning of the show, I sort of say, look, I want you to know that you're safe and that I'm safe, so don't worry about me. If I first start crying, it's not because I'm traumatised right now, it's just because it's a sad story. Um, they seem to go along with it, yeah. As much as possible, I try and make them laugh. So, yeah, there's lots of crying. I can hear, I can hear sniffling from the stage quite a lot, which I know it's a sad story. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very kind and nice. They've been up on their feet quite a lot in Edinburgh, which is nice. And Edinburgh audiences are always really generous and very loud, so um, it's been quite nice, yeah. Lots of belly laughing. How have you been enjoying The Fringe so far? Do you know what? I, normally, I would come and be out every night and go and see loads of stuff, but I'm, I'm up here with the with this show, which is sort of, yeah, a bit traumatic. Um, and very it's very physical. It's lots of dancing and there's lots of sort of... I do weight training in it, so it's just physical. So I've been quite quiet. I've been... I'm living, like, by the meadows, trying to walk. I've joined the Sheraton Spa. Like, I just... I'm just being a bit gentle and careful. And actually, because of that, I'm seeing a bit more of the city. I'm just sort of walking around and having a nice sort of daytime life here. Because you can go quite nocturnal at the Fringe. Yeah. Um, so actually, I'm really enjoying it. Breathing air and sort of... Be, do, doing beautiful things rather than just getting drunk every day. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the sounds of the story, it sounds like it'd be very easy to do. What? Especially uh, go out drinking every night. Oh God, yeah, that's all people, that's all the artists do. That's not true, some artists don't drink, but um, it's so social, you know, like, we, especially as a solo performer or stand-up comedian, you're always on your own. So like this one time in the year where you're all together and it's really seductive. Like last night I was out really late. Just because I'd sit, it was a group of people I hadn't seen in such a long time, you know, and all these people with their shows, and you want to go and support them, but yeah, trying to be a bit careful. I feel really croaky. It's okay. Would you like, you like to take uh, no, I've got some right. water if you'd like it? That coffee looks horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> it doesn't look bad. <laughs> <laughs> looks okay. It looks like it might be instant, and that's not for me, I'm afraid. No? I'm a coffee snob. Oh, yeah? What's your favourite kind of coffee? I always have a Cortado. Oh. I've never had that, but I, I know the name. But it's like a little, like a little one. Anyway, we shouldn't talk about that. It's really <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> off topic. Yeah, it's not <laughs> I, idea. It's not what we're here for. But you know, <laughs> it, it happens. Allow me to ask this, if 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 I may. Yeah. You've been doing the show for a year. Yeah, on and off. Ha- have you found any kind of not closure, but has it helped you deal with what oh, you're going yeah, through? Absolutely, absolutely. Number one, it means I get lots of lovely emails from people saying I went through the same thing. And that feels really lovely because mental health, particularly mother-based mental health, so um, post-traumatic stress disorder, but um, it's what I also kind of had from my son getting ill. But like postnatal depression, it's not something people really talk about. It's still quite a taboo subject. So getting those emails made me feel very validated. And I think sharing that story with people has made other people feel validated. So that makes me feel good. So in turn, that kind of makes me... You know, not depressed. But um, also, yeah, from talking about the show, from talking about the events in the show, I do get closure. You know, part of my work is about being able to talk about difficult things. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. And also, because of making a show, I've had a lot more therapy. And because of that, I feel better. So, yeah, it's been wonderful. I, I love it. And what is next after of the Fringe? Are you taking it out on tour? Yeah, it's going to... Well, I think I've got two weeks off to sort of recuperate and then going to Melbourne and Brisbane wow which is lovely I do love going to Australia and touring and luckily I do get booked there quite a lot now so I I'm going there I'll see my dad and my sister because they live out there um and then it yeah it'll go on a tour I think it's actually coming back to Edinburgh it looks like it's sort of sketched in but I can't confirm that yet um in April next year I'll go on tour for a few months so all around the UK yeah so it's got a bit of a life but because I've got this little lovely boy, I don't go around too much. Yeah, you like to try and stay kind of local. Yeah, if I can. But, you know, I'm a, I am an artist and so I do go on tour. But, yeah, there's a nice... Look, it's shaping up nicely, the tour. So it'll be in lots of different places across the UK. Yeah. Where can people find out more about you online and about the show? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess my website com is probably where you'll get gigs information. But Twitter is where I communicate most with my sort of people that like me I was gonna say my fans but then I thought don't say that Bryony but then I just said it anyway um <laughs> yeah so Twitter mostly and uh, for the show just look on the fringe website I'm a phoenix bitch uh 5 30 every day Bryony thank you so much for your time today it's all right my love thanks for having me on my pleasure 
Briony show is called I'm a Phoenix Bitch, and it is playing at Pleasance One at the Pleasance Courtyard from the 7th of August until the 11th, then a few days off and back from the 13th until the 25th. Now, here's the thing, is that I promised you five guests per day, but today you're getting an extra guest. It's a twofer, Flo and Joan. They came in, they sat down with me, and they had a chat about their show. It's called Before the Screaming Starts. How are you enjoying the fringe? It's good. We're four days in, five days in. It so feels like we're five weeks in. It feels like we're five weeks in. We're five days in, but cut to tomorrow and I think it will all be over. Yeah. It's, there's yeah. no, you sort of just disappear into a time hole and you get, it's like you're put into a dishwasher, time, not a dishwasher, a tumble machine uh, a tumble time machine. hole. Tumble machine, tumble dryer time hole. Uh, this I've is already a very, been this in is it. A very good example of how our brains are working. At yeah, the at this time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's like December now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. We've got to we've got to knock off for Christmas break in a few minutes. Yeah, so. absolutely. Thank God, yeah. I'm hungry. Merry Easter. <laughs> Merry Easter. <Yeah. laughs> what is your show? Tell me a little bit about it. Our show is Flo and Joan before the screaming starts. Yes. Um, it is a bunch of songs. Uh, we we saw every year we just write a new show of songs that are like topics that interest us mm -hmm. throughout the year. Yeah. We've bought a smoke machine this year. A smoke machine. We've yeah. really upped the old tech. Production value. Yeah. yeah. Production value is on the rise. Yeah. One of the things it says online is, have they bought a smoke machine? And I guess you just answered the question. Oh, uh, spoiler. <laughs> yes, we have. yes, but not just any old. Actually, no. They're fun. I can't remember what they're called. Geezers. They're the fun one. Geezers. They're called geezers. They're geezers. They're called geezers. Right. Yeah. Get a geezers Get on. Get geezers out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that unnerved me saying get the geezers out. Yeah, geezers that bothered out. me. It does sound like our smoke machine's going to beat you up at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, laugh or my geezers going to get you. Yeah, Apparently, yeah. if you put your face in, you get covered in oil because it's like oily smoke. Because I thought at one point I could stand over the top and let the smoke just go through my body. Um, but they were like, you'll just be covered in oil. So yeah. you can put your hand through it. But if you stand on it and take a big pounding, then it's, if you pardon the expression, <laughs> uh, you just get absolutely <laughs> covered in oil and you just slide around the stage for the rest of the show. Yeah. So we take that. We take Maybe that on the out. last day we'll, we'll do um, <laughs> Flo and Joan's smoke show. And it will end up as an oil slick at the end of the show. Yeah, it'll be an art piece. <laughs> Fringe just, first. Just roll around and try to hug each other and there's all grease and you slide off each other. Yeah, and yeah. it's to like fair, that's get not your that own back, but with yeah. fish. Yeah, David Benson Phillip comes in at the end. David. <laughs> David, David <laughs> Benson is formerly known. <laughs> David Benson, Bensonian Phillips <laughs> 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 comes in. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is spiral out of control. It has a bit, but you know <laughs> what? If I was ever in control, I don't want to be. <laughs> fair <laughs> play. <laughs> How are you enjoying being up here? Is it a good time? I'm enjoying it. I think we usually, once you get past the beginning hump, it's quite a nice time. We're living with some very good friends of ours that we see. Uh, they f they're from Canada and we don't see them very often. And we get to live with them for a month. So that's been really, really nice this year. Of It's taken uh, any kind of frenzy time. We get to just go home and be human beings and friends with them, which has been really nice. So it's made it really exciting. Like, it's just been exciting to see them. And then one hour a day, we're like, oh, yeah, we have to do our job now, um, which is the show, which is also very fun. So it's so far... It's been going well. I'm enjoying it. We haven't had any reviews yet. So, so far, we're oh. having the, pr the best well, time in the world. Great time. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. oblivious to anything else happening in the world. But <laughs> it's going well so far. Ask me in a week. Does that happen a lot when you're up here? Do you get into kind of the fringe bubble and you don't oh. realise what's happening until you're away? 100%. 100%. I was looking at my um, Twitter feed this morning and usually Twitter is just lots of people jokes, reposting videos. And now it's, got this review. I'm selling out the show. I need to sell more tickets to this. Like, all your all your friends are, are doing all of that you just get thrown into a different different world mm -hmm. which i guess is quite nice our favorite thing is going to see other people's shows yeah i absolutely love it we started we kicked that off yesterday with some shows yeah. who have you been enjoying watching here uh our friends the lusty mannequins we saw their show for the first time yesterday. yeah the people they were living with it's so good zach tucker uh, jack tucker yeah jack Jack Tucker, yeah, Jack Tucker. his name is Zach Zucker, but his show is Jack Tucker. We saw that last night. Yeah, he's a clown. So, so funny. Yeah. He had a bunch of walkouts. <laughs> oh, it was so It was good. brilliant. Funny. Yeah, 100% go see that. Jack Rook was really good. Oh, yeah, Jack Rook. He's amazing. His, he's on After Us. His set is amazing as well. He's got a harpist who plays like Spice Girls and yeah. uh, Ariana Grande on the harp. They're and the only ones we've seen. Muscles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're the ones we've seen so far. We sort of we thought we'd settle in our show and then like gently see some bits and pieces and then as of today I think we're gonna kick it off and yeah. see some more stuff properly. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a party. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. 
Where can people find out more about you online and about your show? We are at Flo and Joan, so F L O A N D J O A N, um, on all of our social media, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we do have a website, but don't go on it because it's a mess. Uh, <laughs> we're going to sort it out this month. We're going to sort it out. Um, and the Ed Fringe website as well. You can find all the details for our show on there too. Thank you so much for your time today, Flo Thank and Joan. Thank you for having us. Yes. Flo and Joan are two of the loveliest people I met up there that whole day. They were so nice and funny and chatty. And you can catch their show. It is called Before the Screaming Starts. It is up at the Assembly George Square Gardens. And the thing about the Assembly George Square Gardens is I was walking around and you go through this unassuming doorway. It's kind of a, a fence. It's kind of fenced in. And you go through this doorway. You can't see what's on the other side. So you go through it. And on the other side is like this... It's this lovely hidden little space. Now you've got the fringe happening all around you and in here is just this delightful little world and it's got picnic benches, it's got family areas, it's got all kinds of pop-up stalls and stuff. It's lovely, absolutely lovely in there. And I'm going to go and see Flo and Joan. Flo and Joan is one of the shows I am going to go and see when I go back to the fringe in a few weeks' time. My next guest is somebody who a friend introduced me to. It is Johnny from Johnny and the Baptists. Now, sadly, Johnny couldn't make the interview day, so I cut off the Johnny via the medium of the telephone. Hello, my name's Johnny. Uh, I'm a comedian and an actor and a writer and uh, a father to a 14-month-old uh, little baby. Aww. And um, that's, that takes up the majority of my time. And um, and she's just woken up about 10 minutes ago from her nap. And uh, she's with her mum climbing the stairs in our apartment. Because oh. we live in London in the basement flat and we don't have stairs. And she, has, she thinks they are hilarious. <laughs> stairs are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Very, very, very efficient. Yes, definitely. <laughs> How are you today, Johnny? Are you well? Yeah, I'm feeling great. We did our first show yesterday. Um, it went really well. We had a great uh, start. We're really happy with the show. Lots of people came along. And um, it's my first Edinburgh as a dad. So I'm quite enjoying it already because um, there is a tendency amongst performers up at the festival to spend their time anxiously worrying about what's going to happen. And I have no time for that whatsoever because I'm constantly running after a 14-month-old um, who is just about learning to um, sort of cruise and walk. And um, that's great. It's really taken the anxiety out of Edinburgh for me. It must be a fantastic distraction. It's the most extraordinary full-time relentless distraction. It is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's actually quite useful. I've got two shows on. I'm doing a solo show in work in progress at 2.30 at Summer Hall. And then uh, the Johnny the Baptist shows every night at 7 at Assembly. And um, so... I've, I've got to go and do those shows, but in between, I've just got this tiny little hilarious little monster um, making sure that I'm never worried. That's an adorable, that's an adorable way of putting it. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, what is Johnny and the Baptists, and what is your show? Tell us a little bit about it. So, we are a um, political musical comedy double act. Uh, we've been going from... About 2012 was uh, when we started. This is our sixth time at the Fringe. Uh, and we make uh, silly, fun, um, but political uh, comedy shows. And this is a show that is slightly political, but it's much more about love and friendship than any of our previous... In previous years, we've written shows about the rise of populism um, and Nigel Farage, uh, the, um, the, the extraordinary wealth gap. We wrote a show about climate change. This show is, is about friendship and love and hope, um, because I thought, frankly, that's something we desperately need. That'd be nice, wouldn't it, in this day and age? Yeah. yeah. Now, I know you'll probably ask this all the time, so I'm going to ask sure. it. At the moment, it must be kind of a smorgasbord, like a fil like a all-you-can-eat of stuff coming at you to write songs about. So how do you choose what to write songs about and how far you can go? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, it, it's sort of actually the more politically um, desperate it gets, the more I sort of move away from wanting to write about it, actually, uh, because it's just so hard to eke comedy out of 
um, the fact that the world is burning up all around us and fascism is knocking on the door. Um, so we try and write to, about silly things. Um, and then you end up sort of filtering back the thoughts that you have about the world into that. Uh, so we have a song about um, Isaac and Abraham uh, from the Bible this year, which is actually about toxic masculinity. But I only realized that halfway through writing. So quite often we start from quite a sort of silly point and then sort of work work backwards. And how long does it take you to put together a, together a song? Do you work... Do you work as a team? Does one of you come in and say, "Hey, I've got an idea for a song," or, or how does how does excuse me how does the process work? So, uh, there's, uh, Paddy and I write everything together. Usually, I come up with the I come in with the big idea, and then uh, Paddy does a lot of the donkey work of working out whether or not that's actually a good idea. Um, apparently, in all partnerships, there's normally one person who comes up with big ideas and then lies down whilst the other does all the hard work. And I, I feel that's probably an accurate representation of us. I, I'm quite good at big ideas, and he's very good at um, um, pushing them through and making them make sense. And we, we write everything together, music and lyrics. We, we joke on stage that I'm more a lyricist, he's more a musician. And it might have started like that, but it's certainly now pretty 50-50 on both fronts. And how has being at the Fringe and being in Scotland changed your show at all? Does being north of the border mean you have to alter certain things? Well, we tour the UK every year quite extensively. So we're touring. As soon as we finish Edinburgh, we'll be off on tour starting 12th September in Margate or Liverpool. Margate, then Liverpool. And then we tour all the way through to December. So we're used to some travelling all around, um, certainly England, Scotland and Wales. We haven't played a lot of Northern Ireland of late, but um, we're certainly used to touring all of Great Britain. And... Um, the, the main difference is, is not so much that you have to change the material, it's that um, certainly people uh, respond differently in different parts of the country. Um, Scottish audiences are uh, actually quite a lot more receptive to left-wing comedy than, um, say, the audiences in uh, Kent or Surrey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I, can see, uh, I can see that. As a as a as a comedian and a socialist, I'd much sooner be playing up here um, than around the M25. Although you never know, sometimes the, the the people of Kent and Surrey really do surprise you. And actually, we go to places. We're, we're touring some lovely places around there, where Richmond and Farnham, when places like that, and Margate and Kent and uh, and a few other spots. And we find that actually we're quite a sort of welcome respite for the, the lefties who live there. Um, so it, it's not so much that we have to change things because uh, we don't really, you know, we, we talk more generally than about individual sort of politics. We're not like um, and Matt Ford does shows that are very sort of incisive about individual politicians. Ours are more sort of about the sort of general um, idea of the world and where we're heading. Um, so that we don't really have to change things, but we, we do find very different perceptions. And Scotland is always an absolute pleasure, Edinburgh especially. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. Yeah, well, it's good people up here. Yeah, we like... We Plus, like, we you know, like I think there is a sense of positivity in Scotland because as the world burns up all around us, you know, Scotland being that, that much further north has probably got an extra 50 years. So, you know, that's great. Yeah, you can come and crash on our couch. We'd love to have you. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate that. Oh, anytime, <laughs> anytime. Maybe what we'll do is actually we'll invest in one of those fold-out beds so you and you and Paddy can come. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, that would be perfect. Fantastic. Can I bring the baby? Yeah, that, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I think I'd be fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, you've mentioned that the show doesn't really change between places where you play it, but what is yeah. the, uh, the general audience reaction to some of your more politically charged material? Well, I, I mean, I it, it's, it's my intention. This show is called... Um, Johnny and the Baptist love Edinburgh and hate bastards. And then on tour, it'll be called Johnny and the Baptist love, uh, if we're in Margate, love Margate and hate bastards. Um, and <laughs> it was an attempt to be less divisive and uh, create more unity. But obviously, that title failed massively to do that. So I don't know why we thought of that. But um, it, it, it's more that um, uh, we, we I, I mean, I think my intention is never to preach to the choir. I'd like a huge amount of different people with different views to come to our show. Um, I've always thought a really good example of political satire um, was um, 
the, the, the news quiz on Radio 4. And some yes. friends of mine, uh, other comedians, their parents are deeply right-wing, and they used to absolutely love Sandy Toxvig and Jeremy Hardy. Mm-hmm. And they were really hard-line right-wingers. And obviously Sandy's a... Uh, uh, you know, a feminist, uh, a staunch liberal. Jeremy Hardy, um, rest his soul, was um, a, a true socialist. Um, friends with Jeremy Corbyn, um, but they loved them because they were so incisive and thoughtful and engaged. And I think actually, even if you disagree, you, you, you people prefer hearing what someone genuinely thinks than hearing someone uh, try and pander to you or. Um, or make you, you know, or sort of just try and play the, the the neutral card. Yeah, that makes sense. What's your favourite part about being up in Edinburgh and being back at the Fringe? Because as you said, this is your first time at, at the Fringe as a parent. How do you think that will change your This is my first time with a baby. Yeah, how do you think it will change your experience being here? Well, it's much, much earlier nights and the earlier starts to the day. So my baby this morning got up at 6.30. Now, I have been up at 6.30 at the Fringe before, but never at the start of the day. <laughs> um, so that's a massive change. Uh, I'm also not drinking uh, this year because I thought that would be a really good... Basically, I think... I mean, I, this, this is not at all preachy. Um, everyone should drink as much as they want or like. But I can't manage a hangover on any level whatsoever with a baby. Yeah. So, um, so this is a quiet, sober Edinburgh Um for me and um so far it's been uh lovely but we're only two days in so we'll see what happens yeah we'll see how you feel on, on the at the end of the show That's right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the voice of johnny from johnny and the baptists they are playing at the assembly roxy from july 31st until august the 25th and except from the 12th and the 19th that's a massive it's a massive run there you've got going on yeah we're not doing Mondays, I think, is our, our deal. Uh, but other than that, we really have to do it every day. And then straight off on a 50-day tour. So it, it's um, no rest. Yeah, there's, there's very, very little rest in that schedule, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Johnny, where can people find out more about you and about the band and about the show? Well, um, you can go to our website, johnnyandthebaptist.co.uk. That's Johnny with no H. Um, or you can go to Assembly Festival. Um, their website, I think it's just assemblyfest.co.uk or something similar to that. Uh, you found out about the show. It's called Johnny and the Baptist Love You and Hate Bastards. Um, it's about love and friendship in a world that's quite devoid of kindness. And um, I, I would love it if you would come along. Lots of funny songs and um, it's very joyful. There you go. You heard it from the man, from the man himself. Johnny, I can't thank you enough for your time today, mate. Thank you so much. Have a great day. It's been my pleasure. Love Edinburgh Hate Bastards takes place upstairs at the Assembly Roxy from the 7th until the 11th, few days off until the 13th, then on to the 18th, couple more days off, and then from the 20th until the 25th. Now my last guest today is Pierre Novelli, and I realised very quickly, name twins! Pierre and Peter. Pierre and Peter, that's yeah. right. We're name, we're name, uh, name buddies. We're name twins. And also off air, we were talking about the equipment I'm using here. Mm. And you bought the exact same gear as I have. Yes. In fact, I did it yesterday. So it's quite amazing to be able to see my purchase <laughs> you in the flesh. S- and thank God it's working. And I tell you what, I'll, I'll ha- pass you the equipment so you can have a little oh, bit, of look a, at that. bit of a look at it. I, uh, I, I bought it because I do, um, I do a podcast with uh, Phil Wang. Right. And... Uh, the the stuff we've been using is 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 not quite good enough, but also mm. it has died. Yeah, it has exploded after not being handled very nicely. So I've learned my lesson. Yeah, and now it's time to get some better equipment. Yeah, as you can see, if you talk too loudly into it, this flashes. So you can kind of adjust it here. All right. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic piece of kit. But we're not here to talk about kit. We're here to talk about your show at the Edinburgh Fringe. What yeah. is your show? Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, the show is called uh, You're Expected to Care. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it would be interesting. To, normally, I write sort of quite observational stand-up, and I tend to steer clear of topics that uh, you might not be able to do on a Saturday night. So, right, um, not always, especially not at the fringe, but in general. Yeah. Um, and I thought it would be interesting for one year to take all the topics that I find the most horrifying, and see if I could do observational stand-up about those, and yeah. sort of the same tone as observational stand-up, and the same sort of friendliness, yeah. but about horrible things. And I don't mean in a Frankie Boyle way. I don't mean in a, a sort of Wikipedia like gross jokes, Jimmy Carway even. I just mm-hmm. mean like as if Michael McIntyre 
or Seinfeld or whoever observational had started talking about ISIS, yeah, or pornographic material, or but in that tone. And what's the deal with people banging horses on the internet? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 Who are these people? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you ever noticed it's a certain kind of horse? They must <laughs> like them. I'm, I'm sorry. So, what's been the reaction to that? Has it? gone down well with your with your audience with your crowd it seems to have gone down well it's it's weird because normally uh, obviously a lot of laughter is a release of tension and if you're talking about you know the bus or whatever man draw you know whatever daily mm-hmm. thing you need to build the tension yeah with your phrasing and your pacing and your your sort of rhetoric or whatever you might call it whereas the tension with topics like isis are already there because people are going oh what's he going to say about suicide bombing or whatever yeah and so the trick is to uh, not let it explode too early, if you'll pardon the, <laughs> the pun. Oh, boy. So that, in a way, it's kind of easier because mm. I don't have to build tension. If anything, there's too much of it. So it's almost like approaching it from the other angle. Yeah. So it's not that there's not enough pressure in the tires, it's that there's so much pressure in the tires, it's quite dangerous. And how are you finding it as a performer? Is it a different muscle to flex? It is, and it's a lot more fun. Uh, it's a lot more satisfying because it feels more difficult, whether it is or it isn't. And it's a lot more fun because it's more like the kind of things you joke about with your friends mm-hmm. in private. Because in private, you wouldn't care about being rude about suicide bombing or yeah. whatever. You, or, or, or or you wouldn't care about making some ex- enormously critical remark about a certain type of person who watches uh, documentaries and doesn't believe them and things, which is another part of the show. You just say it, and that's yeah. much funnier. So it's a, it's, it's a lot more entertaining for me, at least, if not the audience. <laughs> and do you feel it's kind of freeing as a performer? Is this something oh, yeah. you're going to do more regularly, do you think? Uh, possibly, yeah. Now that, I, now that I know that I can do it, I, 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 and I'm no longer so, uh, you might say, gun-shy, mm-hmm. you sort of go, no, I can, I can do this. I can, I can win people around. Because uh, in the past, when I was younger, maybe less experienced, you try and talk about these things, and you sort of... You, the audience doesn't trust you with it. Mm-hmm. You have to sort of handle it quite deftly. Yeah. And hopefully I'm doing that this year. I also find, I mean, not what I've done, I'm not a comedian, I don't know anything about this, but I find that if you're sitting talking about something with a group of friends, there's always the friend who's like, actually, this isn't the way it happens. It goes down like this, 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 and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as somebody on stage, do you ever get people heckling or saying, no, that's not how this happens? Uh, I've seen what I have seen is people who want to say something because they don't realize that I've I've saved the accurate bit to the to the punchline, mm-hmm. and I can see them thinking, oh, I hope he clarifies, <laughs> and they're kind of getting edgy. Yeah, and then when you say the punchline or the bit of information at the end that they were looking for, they sort of go, oh, okay, oh, we're safe, <laughs> we're safe from misinformation, thank God. And then they kind of just sit back and like, oh, until the next thing when you see them building again. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. fact finders. <laughs> Where can people find out more about you and your show online? Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Edinburgh Fringe website, pleasance.co.uk. That would be ideal. More of the money goes to the performer if you buy your tickets through the Pleasance website or through any we- uh, venue website because there are no ticketing fees. Um, oh, excuse me. Not at all. Not at all. There's more pollen up here in Edinburgh, I think, because it mm-hmm. rains more frequently and the plants go, all right, let's 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 go. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh, they can also uh, they can also check out, yeah, Twitter, face, well, Twitter, Facebook, I guess Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. I'm on there. Any social media, really. Yeah. Uh, I do have my own personal website, but it's not like... I, I had this uh, argument with my girlfriend. I was saying that I don't think people go to my website. I think they go to my Twitter or mm-hmm. Facebook first. But anyway... All those places. Yeah. I find Instagram particularly confusing because it's like, why do we have Instagram when we have Twitter? Like, admittedly, you can write more on Instagram than you can on Twitter, but nobody wants to sit and read War and and Peace on Instagram. Or underneath a photo at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's just more engaging because it's so visual. Yeah. And they let you filter it. That's true. Um, Instagram would never have made sense before we had such high-quality phone cameras as well. With this blurry, like... 2003 digital camera kind of <laughs> shots, you know, with the big red numbers in the corner to yeah. show you when it was taken. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't quite have worked. Um, it's Yeah, it's more visual and it's less depressing because people, you can't really post a series of images on Instagram and uh, 
post about horrible news or and you can't retweet. Yeah. So there's no feed pollution, you might say. That's a good thing. Yeah. But then it's not like it's quite asinine, isn't it? It's yeah. by comparison to maybe Twitter where you might see an article about something valuable. <laughs> Whereas on Instagram it's like, look at this makeup I bought. Mm. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Look at my look at my body that like if you watch the video of how we did this mm-hmm. has a sort of terrifying full body makeup thing going on. Yeah. Men and women. But they're like they've drawn on my abs or whatever. Like they've <laughs> spray painted them on. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, and cover me in a sort of sealant so it doesn't rub off in the in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Horrifying. It is a bit wild. Anyway, irregardless, thank you so much for your time today. My, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and every single body in between is it for today's podcast. I thank you for your time and your patience. I thank my guests, Bryony, Flo, Joan, Johnny, Pierre, and I hear tomorrow on the show, I have got... I am Harry from Harry and Chris. And I am Chris from Harry and Chris. And I've also got... My name is Susan Riddle. Among many, many more still to come tomorrow and throughout the rest of this week. So, see you tomorrow. Bye, every single body bye.